rushed to Winston-Salem Hospital. This translated in the eyes. Had to be some young age person, you know what I'm saying? The shooter, the kid, and the bro, I mean, a grandma, you know what I'm saying? They won't have no little morals for nobody. WCNC reports an officer ended up in a shootout with suspects in a car believed to be involved in the shooting, and four people ran off. Police are asking for the public's help. In California, Los Angeles officials indicted seven people on charges connected to shootings that claimed the lives of seven people. One of those shootings was at an Inglewood birthday party that left four people dead. All the defendants recently charged have pleaded not guilty. They're due back in court September 13th. Finally, black mom and business owner Letitia Lewis is making history in Colorado. CBS Colorado reports she opened TNT Pizza. It's one of the first black-owned pizza joints in the entire state. The foster mom and entrepreneur says pizza is her favorite food. I'm Esther Dillard, along with Doug Davis, on your home for 24-7 News, the Black Information Network. Now here's Morgan Wood with the Washington Roundup. President Biden says he's practically declared a national climate emergency, though he's actually yet to make a formal declaration. In an interview with the Weather Channel, Biden was asked whether he was prepared to declare a climate emergency in which he said he had already done that and laid out his climate agenda. When pressed on whether he had formally made the declaration, Biden said, practically speaking, yes. Environmental advocates who have called on Biden to make the declaration say it would unlock far-reaching executive powers to address global warming. Meanwhile, this comes as the president says he'll be traveling to Vietnam soon. The president told a group of donors in New Mexico Vietnam wants to change its relationship with the U.S. and become a partner. Last month, Biden said Vietnam's leader wants to meet with him at the G20 summit in New Delhi in September. This comes as the U.S. is trying to increase its influence in Southeast Asia to counter China. That's your Washington Roundup. I'm Morgan Wood in Washington, D.C. on the Black Information Network. What happens when you add Chevrolet, the National Newspaper Publishers Association, and some of the best and brightest HBCU students in the country? The 2023 Discover the Unexpected Fellowship. These amazing young ladies and gentlemen are driving change with the summer experience of a lifetime. Brought to you by the 2024 Chevy Track. To learn more about the program and follow the students' experience, visit nnta.org slash chevydtu. Susan has always wanted to live in a chateau. I like a certain je ne sais quoi, while Jake is more into the Cape Cod style home. It's a classic look. Compromise is tough, but these two won't have to compromise when you bundle home and car insurance with Geico. It's easy, and they can save even more. In the end, Susan and Jake found a Cape Cod style home where they will only speak French. Bonjour, je came a uh, merci beaucoup and a uh, cordon bleu. You'll get better with time. Bundling without compromise at Geico.com. Is powered in partnership with Direct Release and Chevy. Thank you for partnering with a purpose on the Black Information Network. I'm Doug Davis, and here's the latest from the Black Information Network. A witness in the Riverfront Brawl in Montgomery, Alabama, says a racial slur was used before the fight even broke out last weekend. That's according to a newly released court document. The mother of one of the victims made the allegation in a court. Shooting two Orlando police officers before cops shot him. 
or else as this reeks of a political ploy. This is simply a smoke screen for Ron DeSantis' failing and disastrous presidential campaign. He needed to get back in the media in some positive way that would be red meat for his base, and he will have accomplished that today. He will be in the news nationally and internationally for the individual who has single-handedly destroyed democracy in the state of Florida. The suspension of black prosecutor Monique Morrell seems to be following the Republican playbook by forcing out black prosecutors alleging they are soft on crime. This as gun violence and crime are concerns for everybody. Other examples, the lowest of black prosecutor was replaced and currently in the Oakland area, the Alameda County black prosecutor could be facing a recall. One issue Americans seem to agree, abortion. A new poll shows 77% say abortion rights are either very or somewhat important. The Economist YouGov survey got pretty close results across racial and political lines. Voters in Ohio just rejected a measure on the state constitution that could have ultimately translated into a permanent loss of abortion rights. That six-year-old black boy accused of shooting a first-grade white teacher in the Virginia school allegedly said some disturbing words while being held until police arrived. In court documents unsealed, the child allegedly said, I shot that expletive dead. The child admitting he got his mother's gun the night before. His 25-year-old teacher, Abigail Werner, suffered serious injuries. But she's suing the school in Newport News for $40 million, saying officials knew the boy had a history of violence. The boy's mother was arrested and faces up to 25 years in prison when she's sentenced in October. A Utah man is accused of threatening the president and Manhattan, New York's black district attorney, Alvin Bragg, by suggesting he put a bullet in his head. Well, that man is now dead himself. But FBI agents went to serve an arrest warrant at the Provo home of Craig DeLu Robertson. There was a commotion, and agents shot him to death. A neighbor heard it go down. There was a big boom, and then there was another one, and another one, and another one. And I thought that their house was on fire because there was smoke. Authorities say Robertson's threats against Bragg included going to New York to, as he put it, put a nice hole in his forehead with his 9mm. I'm Vanessa Tyler with Mike Stevens on your home for 24-7 News, the Black Information Network. I'm Dion with God, and this is Practical Parenting. For parents with younger children, it's important to establish a bedtime routine with your kids. Here are a few practical tips to help you with your routine. First, set up a regular bedtime and stick to it. Consistency builds security in your child. Second, teach them to pick up and put away their toys. Third, give them a bath, put on their pajamas, have them brush their teeth, and use the pot. Finally, put them in bed, read them a book, express their faith through prayer if you'd like, and then turn off the light. For some children, a nightlight may be turned on in the room or in the hallway. Whatever you decide to do, help your kids learn to be them and manage their time wisely. This is Scott and Dion, and this is Practical Parenting on the Black Information Network.
I'm Rayno Bischelski. Starting only six weeks after Donye was found hanged by a bed sheet, my colleague John Duffy and I spent two and a half years working with Donye's mother, Melissa, with many members of his family, his friends, and even members of the Ferguson activist community to follow the trail and find out what exactly happened to him. Not only did we find apparent holes in the investigation into Donye's death, but also what appears to be racism in local law enforcement. From Double Asterisk, now this, and iHeartRadio comes an unforgettable new investigative podcast series after the uprising. Subscribe today on the iHeartRadio app, yeah. Apple Podcasts, or wherever you find your podcasts. The opinions, beliefs, and viewpoints expressed in this commentary are those of the author and do not necessarily represent those of BIN and its founding partners and employees. Now it's time to bring the funk with Roland S. Martin. The great activist Fan Lou Hamer once proclaimed, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. That statement alone readily explains the Montgomery, Alabama brawl that took place this weekend. A black security guard is trying to properly place boats, and one boat was in the wrong place and he decided to move it to make way for another boat. The white folks who owned that pontoon boat took offense to that and began to argue with him leading to a melee. Several white folks, men and women, began to attack him. Then black folks came to his rescue and it turned into an all-out brawl. Black folks have been just going off on social media with videos and memes and you name it. And so someone might ask, why are black folks acting and responding the way they are. It is because not just centuries of oppression, but the last four to six years, especially when Trump was in the Oval Office, you had so many videos of black people barbecuing, black people selling lemonade, black people delivering FedEx and UPS packages, black folks just trying to go about their daily lives and they were constantly being accosted by Karens and their male counterparts. A black man fishing and, and several white folks coming by asking him, do we belong here? A black woman at a pool and a white man asking to see her ID. Black people are tired of being abused just for being black. And so black folks are like, you got everything coming to you, including that chair upside your head. I'm Roland Martin of the Black Information Network. Stories you trust from people you trust. The Black Information Network. The Bay Area's BIN 910.